Previously on Grand Sumo Breakdown's Midway Review episode. Now, I know Kakuyu is doing pretty good, but I think Tochi Notion has a real chance. All right, folks, buy them while they're hot. I'm talking Kakuyu t shirts, lunch boxes, aprons, bubble gum. All right, let's slow down there, Flarek. Are you sure it's a good idea to buy all this merchandise? There's like seven days left, and he's still Kakuyu. Kakuyu bandanas, key fobs, breakfast cereal. This hype train has no brakes. Hashtag chill, chill. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. This is Mac. And uh, you just re-listened to one of GSB's all-time greatest hits, the origin of the <laughs> Kakuryu Lunchbox meme i guess you'd say yeah the fabled origin <laughs> but uh it's no joke i'm dead serious i have all these lunch boxes <laughs> but yes Flair, i Flair i had hope uh, chosen uh Kakuryu to be his he, he picked him to win the u show and at that point in the hatsu 2018 ba show uh, he really cacked it up didn't he yeah, he was undefeated yeah, he when yeah. we recorded the Midway episode, so Flarek was all aboard the hype train. And then I believe Kakaryu started off 11-4 that Basho and then lost his final four en route to Tochi no Shin winning that <laughs> show. Oh, is that the one, Hatsu one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depreciated the value of those lunchboxes yeah. real quick. I, know, I remember I was feeling pretty hot because you guys were like, oh yeah, this Yokozuna, are they good at sumo, this Kakaryu? He's not that good, right? <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is a Yokozuna, he's going to do just fine. And like he started out fine, but then yeah, I uh, I was financially ruined. Yes, uh, <laughs> but, but you know, that's that's Flarek will never we're financially be answering. Recovering. That's the question we're going to be answering today, isn't it, Jake? Was Kakuryu good <laughs> at the sumo? <laughs> Could he do the sumos? <laughs> yeah, but no. If you're joining us, I hope that means you are ready to rock out with your cack out, uh, because we are talking <laughs> wow. about the most. There's a reason these cameras <laughs> don't go below the neck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, we are talking about the recently retired 70. Ah, crap. I didn't write the number down. You see 70 or 71. He was the 71. 71. 71st. Now that we've all said it aloud, he is the 71st Yokozuna. <laughs> because Kaku was 69. Hey. Hey, nice. Then Haramafuji. Then the big cack, the big swinging cack, uh, <laughs> followed by Kisuno Sato. <laughs> followed by future Yokozuna. Aoyama. Well, Ryan we Hart's the one, CAC. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we, uh, we, will have, um, we will have a video trivia section at the end of this episode as well. So I made sure that all of these dorks had something to write on to show the camera. I'm also thinking about keeping it for all future podcasts just so I can let my thoughts known whenever one of you idiots are rambling on about something. Yeah. Ooh, We just idea. won't reference it at all. So nope. like no one just will actually randomly know what appear. <laughs> hey, we got, we, we got this on YouTube now. Some people will know. Yeah. Yeah. There Some. You go. Well, we're going to start off with a low point, which is me attempting to tell you his real name and where he's from. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Kakuyu is the, the fourth out of the uh, currently four Mongolian Yokozuna that could change like literally the next tournament. So I feel like I need to put some disclaimers on there. Um, oh, buddy. Uh, but he was born Mongoliev, Mongoli, Mongolia. Mongolia. <laughs> This isn't actually like me playing a bit. Yeah. This is like, no, no actually no. unsure. <laughs> yeah. There's like, you're, mm. you're right, Jake. This is a pretty low point. He is from <laughs> Mongolia, which yes. is a country in Asia. Yes. Um, he, is, he is from a, a fairly rural province. The, the other uh, Mongolian Yokozuna all come from where like almost all the people are in Mongolia, which is the capital Ulaanbaatar. Mm -hmm. uh, but he actually grew up in a uh, rural Sukhbatar province. That one had substantially fewer le letters so i felt confident giving that one a shot uh, did you actually ever complete cock to use real name i was when really you were hoping that we could move on without <laughs> talking about that any further <laughs> mongolialavin sure uh, no. mongolialavin oh that's his first name <laughs> and then his okay yeah that and family name anand 
I'm, I'm, I don't know why I thought I should try that. I am sorry, everyone involved. <laughs> you know, with as many Mongolians as there are in sumo wrestling, we probably should try to figure out at least basic pronunciation principles of the language. What, yeah. What sucks, though, is that, like, you get halfway through the word and you're past your comfort zone already, you know? Like, <laughs> I can say it real slow, but, like, there's so many letters that, like, I, yeah, I should have practiced that instead of practicing all of my cack puns. Um, <laughs> by the way, if, if you're not into the cack puns, buddy, you are in for a long night. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, uh, Cocker, you, who's, we will be referring to by his Shikona for the rest of this episode, for God's sakes. Uh, he was not from a wrestling family, the way, uh, most of the high profile Mongolians, uh, that come over to sumo come from. Uh, his father was actually a university professor and Cocker, you didn't even really start out wanting to do sumo. He's a big kid, wanted to do sports, uh, but he wanted to do basketball. Um, hmm. He no, no particularly family or personal wrestling experience until uh, in his early teens. He did decide he wanted to pursue sumo wrestling after watching sumo on TV. Um, Fun and, fact many people don't know. His father was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, so it did run in the blood. The basketball <laughs> did, not the wrestling. Yes, yes. The basketball but, ran in the blood. That's why he wanted to pursue that. Important to note, yeah. yeah. Indeed. I think um, that's a lie. <laughs> but you don't know for sure i don't I, know for sure that sounds like enough about mongolia to, me. to, to yeah. refute it <laughs> um so but yeah in his early teens he saw sumo on tv he uh in particular he saw kyoku tenho and kyoku shuzan other mongolians that had been recruited in the first wave um go listen back to our mongolian episode um we we covered like the the first wave there the the mongolian recruitment came in like several waves uh, and those guys were some of the first the first wave that started in the early 90s. Um, kind of funny here, Kyoku Tenho, Kakuyu eventually went 15 and three against him in their careers. So kind of cool that the guy, oh, wow. who, <laughs> one of the guys that inspired him to join Sumo, he also kicked his ass a lot of times. <laughs> um, so once he had decided on Sumo, he wrote a letter uh, he, he, and he sent it out to multiple Sumo stables. He had a friend translate it for him. Um, and eventually he was, he got a call back from, uh, Izutsu Oyakata, uh, who invited him to, who bleh, invited him to Japan, uh, eventually took him into the stable. Um, and at one point joked that he'd be better suited to be their hairdresser than a wrestler, uh, because he was a buck 40 soaking wet when he started out. He was very, very skinny. Yes. Matt. Did he maintain his love of basketball? Did they put a hoop in the hair? These are the questions I need answered. Yeah, they actually had a, a, a hoop up on the wall. Uh, yes. Yeah, basketball, not as big a deal in, in the mm -hmm. sumo wrestling circle. So what they called it was the cack ring. Mm. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah. Bravo. All right. Bravo. Yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> the oh, we, of where they actually have Enho just curl up into her ball and they just Hako just dunks them. Into the cockring. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's so, let's move on with this. Oh, move on. You got you got Robody for a second, but we got the punchline, and honestly, yes. I think that's what we really needed there. Okay. Yeah. As long as we have the image of just dunking and hill into yes. basketball, <laughs> get that into your minds. <laughs> oh man. Um. So let's talk about Izutsu Oyakata real quick, just so you got some background here. Uh, former wrestler uh, Sekiwake Sakahoko, uh, who wrestled from 1978 to 1992. Uh, he got nine special prizes and seven Kinboshi in his career. Uh, four of those prizes being technique prizes, which is going to be a theme of this episode. Um, and uh, Sakahoko uh, inherited the stable from his father, the former Tsuru Gamine, who started the stable from scratch in 1977. Uh, Tsuru Gamine has the still standing record of 10 technique prizes in his career. Hello, Teddy. That is a cute cat you've got there. Ryan. Indeed. Um, and uh, the naming convention for this stable uh, is the the first kanji, uh, which Kakuyu uses as well. It's either Kaku or Tsuru, uh, and it stands for crane. So Kakuyu's Shikona means crane dragon. Pretty badass. Anything with dragon. Is I was about to Honestly, say, it sounds that's fair. awesome. It's fair, but yes. Like mountain dragon, river dragon, greed dragon. Yamaryu. Mountain dragon. I like Mountain it. dragon. There you <laughs> Bicycle go. Bicycle dragon. <laughs> Kuma no Ryu. Dragon of bears. 
yeah, dragon of bears. That. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a- anyways, uh, uh, so so yes, this this stable that he comes from, uh, or stable that he joined, has a very very strong history of technique prizes, which uh, Kakuryu will accumulate a decent number of for himself. Um, but he joined Maizumo, the like amateur, like you know, fight your way into pro sumo. He did this at the end of two thousand and one. Um, or excuse me, at the beginning of 2001, uh, and he made a five and two debut. Uh, and within a year, he was all the way up in Sandan, made two divisions up, uh, which I mean, for, I, I guess I shouldn't say, I, I shouldn't imply that that's super quick because compared to some <laughs> other, well, I mean, it's, it's solid. It's perfectly, it's perfectly yeah. fine. But, um, when you, when all the history episodes that we do are mainly on Yokozuna, that you know, are extremely successful. Like Ake Bono, I think he was like in Makauchi within like five minutes or something. Um, <laughs> so like Kakuyu is kind of a kind of an exception here because it took him five years to get to the top division. How old was he when he entered again? Uh, let's see. He was born in 85 to 2016, uh, roughly. 16. Okay, so, that's about so right. Pretty, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty much on the young side. Yeah, yeah I don't know that we've kid. ever seen any of the like guys that have rocketed to the top start when they're 15. Right. Like, I think, I think yeah. the closest we've seen is like Hoku Seho when he was like 18 and then 19 now and his quick rise to the top of Makushta. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, a lot of it also has to do with like, yeah, exactly. So like how much growing do you still have to do? And if yeah, you're like you 16, said, he was a buck 40. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, obviously he put on weight. Uh, let's see. By the time that he got to the top division, or actually, by by the time that he was like even starting the actual wrestling thing, he had put on like forty pounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he, he's he was really getting up there. And yeah, let's see his his actual like regular build weight once he got like once he stabilized was like around one hundred and fifty kilograms. Uh, so like in the low to mid three hundred pounds, um, that's perfectly perfectly solid. But he definitely started out a bit on the uh, a bit on the lanky side. Um. But yeah, so he he kind of plateaued actually within uh, Sandanme. Um, he was kind of let's see, he he shuffled around Sandanme for like almost two whole years. Then he kind of like turned a corner. He slowly worked his way through Makushta in about a year, through Jurio in about a year, and now we're here at the end of 2006, and he's making his debut in Makuuchi. Nothing, uh, nothing particularly eventful, other than just like the pace that he that he made. It, it was all kind of just like slow methodical four and threes five and twos uh he actually only had one tournament uh one tournament win in the low divisions yeah something that i'm gonna point out about his transition from jurio to makauchi just because i do pay attention to the bonds i have page. this written down and i was gonna ask you about it yeah yeah it's just <laughs> how absolutely insane his promotion his initial promotion into makauchi was he was jurio one i believe he had a nine yep. and six record and i think he made it up to jake's Jake's going to be really impressed if I nail this. I'm going to say Micah Shira nine, eight. Damn it. I wanted to say eight. <laughs> you <laughs> fail. Uh, but yeah, nine and six record from Jurio up to Micah Shira eight is just ridiculous where I was talking about like Ura had a 12 and three record at Jurio two. And I think he's going to end up at Jurio 13. So that's just how yeah. different or M- Maka Uchi, Micah Shira 13. Yeah. Micah so Shira 13. You, how, yeah, yeah how, exactly. how things change over the past like 15 years and who's putting together bonds case and what they've uh... it, it wasn't just that though uh it was very screwy they had seven people going from jurio to makuchi <laughs> seven yeah so Jeez. it was it was definitely a screwy bonds okay regardless of era um but yeah he let's see so from nine with a nine and six you'd expect him maybe like my Gashira, like 14 to 16 something like that you that know, like would be the, reasonable right well, in the it depends on tier what the size of the Sanyaku ranks was, how many people were in there at yeah, the yeah, time. But that, sure. that's getting too too far into the weeds and something that doesn't matter. Let's talk more cock. Re- <laughs> regardless, <laughs> re- regardless, it is way higher than it should have been just because of the circumstances of the Bonske. It was, it was a very weird one. Um, so he was the eighth Mongolian to make it into the top division. And weirdly enough, uh, Izutsu Oyakata's only ever uh, uh, wrestler that he raised to the Makuchi division. Oh, yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, hmm. we'll we'll talk a little bit more about him later. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I I, I didn't really believe That's that weird. when I read it on on Wikipedia at first. So I had to figure I I had to do a little bit of research to like wrap my head around it. Uh, what's up, Ryan? 
Well, I know when that stable had to shut down because of Izutsu Oyakata's passing, there were only mm-hmm. three Rikshi there, I believe. So I wonder if it's always just been a smaller stable and with a amount be. of guys, there's not as many chances to get people up to the Maegashira ranks. But I don't yep. know if that's how it's always been. It not not it wasn't always like that small, but yeah, it was never a huge one. Um, and uh, yeah, I, like I said, I, I got some more on that when we get there in the timeline. But um, for now, let's uh, let's talk about uh, the early Makuchi career for Kakuryu, um, because this was also fairly slow, uh, kind of like his rise to the division. Uh, he he didn't really become a Joy Sanyaku mainstay very quickly. It took him like two and a half years or so uh, of just kind of puttering around in the top half of the Magashira, uh, like, like single digits or so like, yeah, you know, like the last year or few of like, you know, a Takara Fuji or not even a Hokuto Fuji. Cause Hokuto Fuji has been in and out of Sanyaku a few times. Basically we, we get all the way from 2006 to like 2009, uh, before he actually makes his Komasubi debut. Uh, he makes his Sekiwake debut in the very next tournament. Cause he did well. Um, but then he floundered around in the upper Magashira for another couple of years. It's, it's remarkable to me how we're now like seven years into his career. He's in like his early mid twenties and he's still like, just, okay, that guy's pretty good. You know, he's been Sekiwake once. Um, and, but it's, it's really not until like 2011 or so that we finally see him turn like an, another corner. Um, in this time, he did pick up a handful of prizes. Um, he, he got, let's see, seven technique prizes in his career. So I think that's a very high ringing endorsement of that Stables, uh, that stables pedigree, that Stables mm-hmm. ability to train wrestlers, regardless of how many wrestlers they put in Makuchi. That's a buttload of technique prizes. Technique prizes being like, you know, obviously the the, the most prestigious one. Uh, I shouldn't no, say highly obviously, coveted. but... Yeah, yeah, it's like that's that's the 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 coolest one. If you could pick a, a special prize to get, uh, technique is is definitely got the prestige to it. Um, but uh, regardless, this is uh, we're like I said, we're talking around 2011. Um, every time we have a wrestler that was active in 2011, we bring up the uh, match fixing scandal. As far as we know, Kakuryu has had no involvement there. There's no reason to think that he had any uh, anything untoward uh, under his Mawashi. I'm sorry um, to laugh. All I could think of is Sokokurai with that one. That's the all I can. And then I story? think the chicken yeah. farmer. I'm like, I can't not think of match fixing and not picture Sokokurai. Yep. No, Kakuryu I, didn't I, get kicked out or anything like that. Kakuryu would be like the last guy I would think of to accuse of anything bad or <laughs> reprehensible or anything other than dignified. Just, mm-hmm. well, I'm sure we'll talk about it more, but yeah, Kakadu is just like the epitome of what you would want a sumo wrestler to be. Unfortunately, he wasn't Japanese for uh, the people in charge over there. So probably never embraced him like he probably deserved, but yeah, he, he, he definitely was like about as stereotypical of a uh, of like it, demeanor wise mm-hmm. like if you ever see i honestly i think i wrote down more than one but like i instantly forgot all of the quotes that i had from him <laughs> they're all just like so bland <laughs> um <laughs> but that's that that i always look as at, look at that as like one of the ways to judge like how how much of a of a sumo wrestler was he like demeanor wise <laughs> hmm, i can't remember anything from the quote i literally just read he must be onto something here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely tamer when you compare him to uh, his contemporaries of Hakuhill Hill and uh Harvard Asa Shoryu. Asa yeah, Shoryu Asa, as well. Asa Shoryu uh, especially too. Asa Shoryu, yeah. Uh, yeah, Asa Shoryu is kind of like the the generation before him. Like uh mm-hmm. Kakuryu is really only getting into the Sanyaku and making his Ozeki run while Asa Shoryu is on his way out for being kind of a dick. Yeah. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, so anyways that that um that 2011, um, like the the technical examination, Basho, I think is the phrasing they use. Like the the next one after the uh, the the canceled one, they there was just extra scrutiny and stuff. Um, and with all of those dastardly cheaters being uh, on the lookout, uh, an honest, dignified man like Kakuyu had a chance to rise up and get a Jun Yu show and his sixth technique prize. <laughs> um, this was his second junior show. He had one like less remarkable one at 11 and four the prior year, but 
I kind of skipped over that because there are so there's a number of years with so little actually going on, which again just speaks to how dignified of a of a wrestler Kakuyu is. <laughs> um, anyways, let's talk about his Ozeki run. That's another thing that we always want to touch on when we talk about guys that have gotten this high. Uh, so we're talking uh, the end of 2011 uh, into the beginning of 2012. Uh, Kakuyu has been a Sekiwake or Komosubi for about a year. Uh, you know, kind of wobbling back and forth. Uh, he got that uh, that June U show in the 2011 technical examination thing. A couple more tournaments of like decent performance. Uh, and then in, let's see, here we go. Uh, in November of 2011, he goes 10 and 5. In January, he goes 10 and 5 and also gets a uh, outstanding performance prize. And then in 2012... Uh, he gets a Jun Yu show, Gino show, and Shukin show. So that's a technique and a fighting spirit prize, as well Dang. as the second place. Um, and he lost the tournament in a playoff to Hakuho. Mm. Ah. <laughs> what was his record? Like 13 2, 14 1? Uh, 13 and 2. All okay. Right. He's, um, that'll do it. 33 over 3. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. 10, 10, 13. Especially that 13 being Peaking the last the one. End. Peaking at the end, and also the yeah, so the the junior tiebreaker show match against wins. Takuho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you would have got, I mean, I think win or loss that uh, you know for sure that was they were they were going into day fifteen like yep he's he's gonna get Ozeki so, mm-hmm. um. But yeah, it would have been it would have been pretty cool if he had gotten the gotten the prize there, and true to form, uh, he had a quote here where he said I I was not ready for a tournament win yet. You know, he's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't have the, uh, the experience, the dignity to, to do that just yet. How modest, how humble. Yeah. Like almost annoyingly. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, so, uh, regardless though, this puts him at Ozeki, uh, pretty, pretty easy decision to, uh, to promote him there. And he is Ozeki from, uh, here we go. May of 2012. Uh, uh, actually exactly two years. Hmm. So for exactly two years, he's an Ozeki, um, not even one Make Koshi. He gets wow, a winning record him. in every tournament. None of them really all that spectacular. Um, they're all eights and nines. There's two tens sprinkled in there, one eleven. And then something happened in 2014. I'm not sure what, um, but he all out of nowhere just goes 14 and one. And again, uh, loses to Hakuho in a playoff. Um, he actually beat him in regulation, but he lost to him in the playoff. Oh, okay. wow. Cool. Yeah, let me uh, bring up some more on that tournament. Uh, yeah, and that was on day 15. Uh, it Because mu- it, uh, at that point, Hakuho was the only Yokozuna. So he would have needed to beat Hakuho two straight in one day to take the Yusho. Exactly. Right? Very difficult task. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that win over Hakuho in regulation was his third win in 33 tries against Jeez. Hakuho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he beat Hakuho the first time, he was 0 and 26 against uh, against all Yokozuna that he had faced. Oh, okay. holy all Yokozuna. I'm like that. That's Tochi Noshin record right? against Hakuho right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. How many wins was it before he actually got his? Oh my God. Yeah. He he lost his. He, yeah, I think he lost about as many as Tochi Notion did to Hakuo before he beat him. <laughs> yep. But to be fair, everyone was losing against Hakuo. That's yeah. a very a very high bar to, to yeah. clear, for sure. Mm-hmm. But regardless, um, losing to Hakuo in a playoff, getting a, his fourth Jun Yu show, and then following that up with another 14-1, and one, but this time winning the Yu show, uh, including a win over Hakuo in regulation. Uh, made it a pretty easy idea, or a pretty pretty easy decision to promote him to Yokozuna, just like his Ozeki promotion. Uh, uh, just just for quick clarification, he did start zero and twenty against Hakuho. Twenty. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So this is something that gets brought up a lot, especially because the last two Yokozuna have been promoted this way, Kisuno Sato included. Um, it used to be the idea. Well, maybe not used to be, but like the the general idea is win two tournaments in a row and you get as an Ozeki and you get promoted to Yokozuna. Uh, but there's also this clause that, or the equivalent is good enough. So in this case, a 14 and one with a playoff loss was deemed equivalent. Okay. 
you kind of have to bend the rules in the Hakuo era a little bit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't get anything. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that he had a win over Hakuo in regulation, I think, also. Definitely helped. In both of really those 14-1s. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, Hakuho just had uh, a couple more losses. I think he ended up 12-3 and three in that second one. So there, there wasn't a playoff in that second one. He just won it outright. That's the way to do it. And uh, so in May of 2014, he makes his debut as Yokozuna 2 East, because at this point, um, Harumafuji Harma mm-hmm. was involved, but why was he? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, e- duh, 2 yeah, East. East. So yeah, yeah. Two the, East. the third out of three. Yes. Uh, I For some reason, I was like, who's the fourth? Oh, God, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the fourth Somebody... doesn't come until much later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to learn how to bonsuke, Jake. <laughs> somebody does, and, and uh, somebody already did, so now I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, so, Kaku, you picked the Unryu style uh, doyo iri, so of the... Oh, yeah. Yep, uh, as opposed that's to the, the loops, Shiranui. Right? Um, I believe that's the one loop. You go on, You had to say... I, it's the same as no it's, Sato. I knew it in my head until you started asking me out loud, yeah. Mac. Damn it. I'm sorry. So this is your the, fault somehow. The Ow. big thing is it's like the one hand out, and one of them's just kind of caressing their... Right, one's like, more aggressive, breast. and the other one's more defensive, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. It looks like Unryu is the single... The single uh, loop. Okay. Loop in okay. The back. Uh, it is also much, much more common. Uh, it, there's 41 of that style, and there's 13 of the other style. Mm. Yeah, um, for the longs of time, like uh, the... What's not Umiyu, but what's the other style called? Shiranui. Shiranui. Yeah, that was uh, kind of considered bad luck for the longest of time. Like, there's a lot of hot. Uh, Yokosun who picked that and, like, they got injured or something kind of bad happened. And so it was actually a lot of people ended up not using Like you say, it was very unpopular uh, until Hakuho came around and made it really <laughs> brought a lot of good luck to the name. Oh, Hakuho. Hard with Fuji. <laughs> Yeah, I think if somebody said, hey, don't do this because it's cursed, Hakuho probably said, I'm now doing it. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's Hakuho. <laughs> it also um, looks this is so mine. much cooler, personally. Yeah. Like both arms out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good look. Yeah, the double loop is definitely cooler. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so Hakuho and Harumafuji uh, used Shiranui. Uh, let's see, going back also, Wakanohana, Asahi Fuji. Oh, and then Futahagro. Yeah, so, okay, ah. I can understand why that's looked at as bad luck compared to the other <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, for the record, Kisuno Sato also did Unryu, just like Kakuryu and the majority of everybody. Yeah. Um, anyways, though, so he picked that style. Uh, also around this time, he announced his engagement. Uh, he uh, uh, got engaged to a Mongolian woman whose name is even harder, it looks like, so I'm not going to That's a weird name. One. It is a weird name. <laughs> Even it harder, indeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it was a big deal for uh, um, for anybody to get uh, to get you shows in this in this Hakuho era. Of course, uh, some of the only other guys like it, it was basically Hakuho and Harumafuji soaking up the winds at this point. Kisuno Sato, uh, not Kisuno um, uh, no. Koto Shogiku. But over the next yeah, yeah Giku. Over the next couple of years here, there was Koto Shogiku and Kisuno Sato and Kakuryu. Or as I like to f- refer to them, since those other two guys are super rotund, the cack and balls. Um, but, uh, oh, that was that was a clumsy one, but we got there. Uh, it's it, it, it hit it hit. So in 2015, though, the next major narrative of Kakuyu's career begins, and that is injuries. So the first matches that he ever missed uh, were were in this period, or excuse me, uh, first that he had ever missed as a Yokozuna came at 20. Um, yeah, as a Maigashira, he missed like three matches. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but it wasn't until 2015 as a Yokozuna that he missed significant time. Um, and he was the first Yokozuna in 12 years to sit out consecutive tournaments in 2015 when he had multiple injuries going on. His very first one, uh, his first major one was a shoulder injury, actually. Um, but anyways, he comes back from Tubasho off and then kind of kicks ass. So he gets a uh, June Yu show immediately and his second career Yu show in uh, September of 2015. Funnily enough, these were both at 12 and 3. Just sometimes that's good enough, sometimes it's not. Hmm. Good enough for Terra Fuji past couple of Basho. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, 
let's see the the one i wanted to bring up though was uh in september the one that he did win he lost to terano fuji in regulation but then he beat him in the playoff mm. um so he he has become the hack he was formerly the cac and now he is he he takes the the that that wasn't even a pun. That was just. Like, I was about to say. I, just, I don't know about that. No, one, it, it was no. That wasn't even a pun. It was just the same, the exact same <laughs> position that he had been on the other side of, just like a couple of years earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Oh, here's the the quote that I wrote down that you're gonna forget the second I stop talking. He says, "It was tough. I thought I might lose a title once again, but then I came to think that all I needed to do was to execute my style of sumo." <laughs> I feel rewarded for continuing to work hard without getting down on myself. Mm, wow. He, I almost fell asleep like reading guy. that. Let's go. He, he, he <laughs> could have saved himself a lot of trouble. It's like, I thought I might have lost, but I didn't. But I did. Question. <laughs> My brand of sumo, yada, yada. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, uh, then we are now we're into 2016. We are we're oh, so close to the GSB era here. Uh, I can I can feel it coming. As as it is popularly known from, I believe, probably September of September of sixteen is when we started forward. Is is the official GSB era of sumo and kind of when it went down the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it certainly did for the CAC. Um, it, it, yeah, from this point, from the GSB era on, he was he was a rather limp, uh, a rather limp CAC. He, he did win more Yushos in the GSB era than any other era, though. Also and true. those are the only tournaments he finished, for the most part. Oh, no. <laughs> Not literally, but really close. So 2016 starts off 10 wins, 10 wins, 11 wins. Sounds good so far. Uh, then the back and the ankle start acting up again. Uh, sits out another tournament. But then he comes back, uh, just like the year before. I'm pretty sure this is where he was like doing... Um, 2015 and 16, I think he was doing seasons of an anime, or at least going for that storyline. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> he starts out with injuries and tribulations and then wins the U show at the end of the year. <laughs> Fits. 2017 blows that out of the water, though, uh, because in 2017, he got 18 wins <laughs> in the year. Yeah. Uh, he That's finished... when he was like uh, ah. injured a lot, right? Yep. He, uh, so the list for this year, you're going to need to be more specific, Flarek. <laughs> yep. The list for this year is the right leg, the left ankle, the right foot, and then the back again. Um, back is back. He got a 10 and five in March. And that is the only tournament that he, that he actually finished. He, uh, he got most of the way through January and then the final four tournaments of the year, just crap. Uh, he got, he went one and three and then pulled out and then he went Ouch. two and one and then pulled out. Then he sat all the way out in September and November. Yeah. Yeah. And this is when, when we were first starting our podcast at the end of 2017, this is the first time that the get healthier or or get out uh, narrative started. It was literally around from the very beginning of our podcast. It sure was. (laughs) Uh, So Izutsu continuing his trend of kind of being really hard on Kakuryu has said, if he can't win next time he steps on the dohyo, there will be no option to pull out midway. He would have to take the decision to retire as a man. Oh, man. All right. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, and then something that uh, I'm going to pretend is causation and not correlation is at the end of 2017, we got the Haramugazi incident. Ah, uh, yep. Uh, Kakuyu got docked his pay for a tournament uh, because he was in the room and supposedly an adult and didn't stop the shit from going down. <laughs> supposedly, yeah. An adult. Him and Hakuho, a bunch of other people. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. only imagine that Kakuyu was the designated driver. Honestly, <laughs> probably, and he was yeah. probably right there in the middle when Haramufuji cold cacked ter- uh, Takanoiwa right in the head. <laughs> yeah, I had that one written. Cold down. jack. I, was, I wasn't sure I was going to work that one in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you did it. Well done. But I did it. Uh, Keep 2018. Coming. Keep him coming. Don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> 2018 was simultaneously the most successful year of Kakuyu's career and also continuing his downfall. It's a very <laughs> weird year. So he starts yeah, he off. Like... Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. He, he starts off working for free and gets 11 and 4 in January. And then for the first time in his career, actually gets to you show in a row uh, in uh, in March and in May. And this is also right around the same time as Tochi Notion's real, uh, real big run to get Ozeki. 
Uh, so I, I loved 2018 because there was a, there was a year where we had like Kakuryu versus Tochi notion as like the main rivalry somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, and then we went back to Hakuo wins LOL, of course, but like, you know, we had it, we had a quick break with like, it was a spinoff season of the anime for one year. The OVA. It was cool. Yeah, it was an OVA. That's what it was. It there was not go. canon. It was absolutely it was the not OVA. Canon. <laughs> be, be remiss to not point out that the the highlight of the Tochi no Shin versus Kakuyu rivalry was the infamous Tochi no Shin Henka of cock to you oh yeah i believe that was to maintain his ozeki rank <laughs> yes that was later that was not during this that was actually in 2019 it was oh the was la- that really it okay. was the last time they ever fought <laughs> and i am still correct that it is the <laughs> the the end of their rivalry yep so tochi notion was like son of a bitch i'm gonna end my career 24 and th- or three and 24 against this guy and he's like no <laughs> not today so help me i will end it four and 23 against this guy <laughs> Um, also, I'd like to keep my massive amounts of money, please. Yes, please. Yes. I would prefer the money. <laughs> <laughs> and parking spot. And my yes, parking spot. I want my parking space. <laughs> um, so fun fact about that March 2018. So we're talking back during the consecutive U show period. Um, Kaku, you clinched it on day 14. Uh, but obviously, you still have to wrestle all 15 days, right? So then he has day 15 against Takiyasu who they have a photo finish and they make him do a rematch, even though he's already got the U show. It's the last <laughs> match of the entire tournament. I had totally forgotten this. Uh, and then in the, in the, in the rematch, Takiyasu gets him. Oh. Like, what? what the hell, man? Just <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> Takiyasu Ozeki at that point. Uh, I believe it would so. be if that was in the 20 yeah. for, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If it was the final match for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the second of those two consecutive ones, I was fully, Fully legit, no weird stuff going on. It was just a straight up fourteen and one. He beat Hakuho on the final day. Um, so yeah, good stuff. No, no asterisks, no storylines, no nothing. All that special about that one. That was just super clean. Uh, weirdly, his his loss. Um, let me pull it up because I Tomo Kaze, oh, right? I almost no, don't no, that it. was a different Basho. Uh, Show Hozan. Was his only loss? Yeah, exactly. I I was did, like, did <laughs> did Shohozan finish with an eight and seven record? Yeah. Did he get an outstanding performance prize? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the encyclopedia that is bro- Ryan's brain. <laughs> no. Sorry. I, I I remember that because I had in our old prediction series that we did, we like chose people to get special prizes. And I remember I chose show hose on for that. And like, he was seven and seven on the last day. And I just needed him to get a win on the last day. I think to get to eight and seven, because I knew that he'd beat cockney and I knew cockney was going to get the U show. And so if like, you're a guy that was the only person to beat a U show winner, you got outstanding performance. And then he got the eight and seven on the final day. And that got me the point that I needed to either win or not lose. So I distinctly mm. remember that show. <laughs> is on special in prize your brain. For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't even... all of those details correct jake yeah, everyone of them. angry <laughs> <laughs> I'm not angry i just don't believe you that you don't have it open anymore i told you to close the tabs before we started recording but don't i don't have it you. open you told me to close the cockney related tabs not the sumo db not not also the show hose on related tabs yeah. that you always have no, i, was about to say, I always say have the show hose on tab open just so i can tell that story whenever an opportunity yeah. comes up he, he has a scrapbook that he's been making <laughs> just for show hose on <laughs> oh man it's only his biceps <laughs> uh, that's and all you need <laughs> yeah it takes up a full book um but so the the ankle was his uh his main injury problem in 2018 uh so he didn't really do all that great after his 2U show uh he went 3 and 2 and then pulled out and then in September he actually went 10 and 0 and then lost his final 5 so like as oh, soon yeah, as he... I think that started a trend that we we kind of picked up on yeah <laughs> yeah uh and then he didn't even enter in November of 2018 so yeah things are things are tough here uh, January is the same way. Uh, and then we get like the last real successful period of his career is mid 2019, uh, where he completes three tournaments in a row Woo! for the first time in a year, more than a year. Um, he gets a 10 and five unremarkable. He loses a bunch of them at the end. Like our, like we had started predicting. Uh, then he gets an 11 and four, his seventh junior show. Hey, way to go. Pretty good. Pretty good job there. 
And then uh, he manages to shake off the GSB jitters of having podcasters in Japan at the same time <laughs> as wrestling. That's right. And in July of 2019, he went 14 and one, including a win over Hakuho to get his sixth and final U show. I remember that one distinctly because he lost to Tomokaze. Yep. And I yep. thought, Tomokaze? What, what, who's this guy? <laughs> Man, if this guy's knees stay attached to his thighs, he was going to be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Was it like the very next tournament or something? Or it was key later? issue of 2019. Mm. Okay, because it was Tomokaze and Wakataka Kage like on the same day or back to back or something. It was pretty close. It was like days three. Or it was very or very early. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I think no Wakataka Kage it was got injured on day four because he had he four wins. Four and zero. He never lost in the ring in Makauchi for like another year after that because he <laughs> <Yeah>. got hurt. <laughs> Our undefeated god god king of Makauchi. Little did we know that he was, he was actually kind of good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Kakuyu, though, uh, he won that U show while we were there. And uh, yeah, he he he, he kind of shot his wad well, we, to impress us because he didn't finish a tournament for three more in a row. Uh, he went four and three, pulled out, uh, actually had a Fusen on day one in Kyushu of 2019. I think he, was he just got Asano- injured, but like too late to pull oh, yeah. out. Like, that was an uh, Asanoyama freebie win. Yeah. Yeah, they like if they have the if they have the Tori Kumi written out, which usually happens what like the Friday or something Thursday, Thursday Friday. or Friday. Yeah. Thursday, but like Thursday, if Thursday. they have it, the match is written out, and somebody pulls out after that, it's a Fusen loss mm-hmm. um, because they're not going to like rewrite the whole thing. Yeah, typically you know if you're going to be out prior to day one, so it's really weird to see a day one Fusen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, what's funny is Kakuyu has two of them. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, one of his uh, earlier ones in 2015 was also a day one Fusa. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there was that, and then uh, 2020 begins, which was just a great year for everybody. Um, he went one in three and pulled out in January. And uh, he actually got his uh, his final tournament completed was also his eighth June U show in uh, March of 2020. He went 12 and three. Uh, yeah. And they, was, they knew it was going to be a Yokozuna's last uh, complete Basho. So they're just like, let's celebrate all through May. We'll cancel the May tournament. Just let the good times roll. Uh, and then we'll come back <laughs> in July. Yep. The other thing that's worth noting on that one, um, that May or excuse me, March of 2020 uh, was Kakuyu was ranked the Yokozuna Ozeki. Yeah. Because for the first time in 38 years, they had like an unbalanced Bonsuke. They you need to have two Ozeki at the top, um, and because Takakesha was the only actual Ozeki, for purposes of I guess <laughs> nothing. Like what actually <laughs> change? Like the matchups don't change. The Bonsuke looks the same. Like physically, I don't know. You, but you got to have two. But uh, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't know yeah, what you're you gonna You have to have two. So they just like put a little. Oh, next to uh, Kakuyu's ranking on that one, I guess. <laughs> and his name was double wide. Oh, is that was that what was physically different yeah. on the Bonsuke? Mm-hmm. Cool. Because your name uh, beneath your name, they have your rank. And so beneath Kakuyu's name, they had the Yokozuna and the Ozeki rank on the Bonsuke. Yeah, I, ha- I actually uh, got that Bonsuke and it's hanging up in a wall in my house somewhere. Cool. Nice. Nice. Um, but unfortunately, that, like I said, was the last tournament he completed, even with... Um, even with the canceled May Basho, the one where we did our not so Basho, uh, our full simulated thing, didn't um, even make it through that. Did he get injured in that one? <laughs> yeah, he pulled I, out. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. Um, he he comes back after cacking about for four months of recovery time, and in July, he has his final single match, and everybody remembers this one. This is the one where he Charlie Brown's uh, he misses oh. Endo's leg with a kick, and just falls on his ass, hurts his own elbow, and has to pull out. <laughs> And also his back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now we get to round two, Electric Boogaloo, the Wrath of Khan uh, of, <laughs> hey, get healthy or retire. And he's like, no, uh, to both. <laughs> no, I, I don't think this is round two of that. I think at least in our podcast terms, it's at least the third or fourth time. I would like, say fourth at this. Yeah. Well, I think there were I think it was the second time that there were official things okay. because like 2017 when he missed he he went four in a row without completing yeah. he let's see yeah his next we, longest streak is three without completing we were a lot quicker to pull the trigger on getting him out of sumo yes yep. 
Hey, YDC West, we are, uh, we're an influential body. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> it's true. Um, but uh, part of the reason that he might have been delaying the, the decision to retire was it was a long ass procedure, two and a half years to actually get his citizenship from the time that he started the procedure. Um, he got his citizenship at the end of 2020. Um, and that would allow him to stay on the uh, stay on as an elder in the sumo association. As a Yokozuna, he's entitled to maintain the name Kakaryu for five years, uh, after which he has to get a stock. But if he didn't become a citizen, he couldn't do any of that. He would have to just be retired and out of the sport. So, Would he be inheriting the Izutsu Kabu at that not point? Not automatically. Not automatically. Okay. Right. Um, so we kind of, we, we kind of, so yeah, Oshima um, has the Izutsu Kabu right officially, now. That is correct. And I do have a little bit more note on that okay. Uh, okay. in a minute here. Um, because yeah, I did want to bring up that, um, during one of the tournaments that he pulled out of, uh, midway through the Basho, Izutsu Oyakata passed away. Um, Kakuyu had actually already pulled out the day that it happened. Um, so it could have been the case that those, that they're unrelated, but regardless, it wasn't a good tournament for him for many reasons. Um, but over the next couple months, what the, uh, the, uh, sumo association did was they, they sent the, like Ryan said, there were only three wrestlers. So they merged them with Michinoku stable. Um, Michinoku, uh, Oyakata was actually a former stable mate of Izutsu when they were both wrestling. So that's probably part of the reason for it. Um, but, uh, either way, uh, Michinoku stable, uh, the only other, uh, top division wrestler in that stable is Kiribayama. So for a couple of years, <clears throat> similar to Tochi Notion and Aoyama, just because of stable merging, um, there were more than two, or there were more than one foreigner in the stable. And that's the only way that that can really happen these days. Uh, generally, you are limited to one foreigner in your stable. Um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, when uh, Kakuyu committed to wrestling or retiring in uh, March of 2021, he obviously came up short, so he retired. And it was kind of strange because he retired. Like, didn't he make that announcement like halfway through the Basho? Do you remember that, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It was kind of kind of like why... he, he, he was talking that he would come back in May uh, and then that would be his do or die because he, he, he was good to go for the Haru Basho uh, just this year. And then something came up like three or four days before where he re-injured himself and then it sounded like all right sit out this one come back for may that'll be my make or break and then something don't know what changed his mind where he's like all right that's day eight nine something like that i'm gonna retire yeah so uh and it probably would have saved him some drama in the uh, off season between those two basho of getting yelled at by ydc east yeah YDC West, you know, we, we, we had already sent our letters. We were, very we, we understand. We, we acknowledge, we understand. Thank you. We saw how Kisano Sato was treated with his like two years of just never doing anything. And we were like, you know what? Maybe Kakuyu, you're okay for now. Yeah. Either way though. <laughs> uh, so he was, he was officially done uh, mid Basho. Uh, and uh, he said he was relieved and freed by the decision, which I can totally get that. So it must've been like as much pressure as anybody could live under in a professional setting like that. But uh, anyways, uh, he, over the last couple of years of his career, he actually did have three kids. He had a uh, two daughters and a son uh, in the year in, let's see, 2015, 2017, and 2020. Sorry, one kid in each of those years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just don't want to get that too misconstrued. Oh, Even thanks. harder, it's a triplet machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even harder. Yes, her name is even harder. <laughs> God damn it. Um, that's, so that's that's canon now. Kakadu's wife's name is even, even harder. harder. It is even harder. <laughs> so the Izutsu Elder Stock I wanted to talk about real quick because it's a weird one. Um, so yes, officially, it looks like Toyonoshima is the guy that is, is holding on to it. But what's kind of weird... Uh, and I'm I'm going to throw these sources under the bus because I have no legitimate source beyond them. 
but I've read about it on Sumo Forum and the Tachi I podcast guys. Uh, Tachi I podcast, by the way, uh, shout out to them. One of the top 25 English language Sumo podcasts. So good Ooh. for them. Yeah. <laughs> cracking, uh, cracking the top tier here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but according to both of those sources, the, uh, yeah, you, you know, as, as like a little brother, you know, <laughs> or like a cousin that you see sometimes and you kind of like tussle their hair and then like try to get out of the conversation quickly. Yeah. In, in the photo of us with Kisei Nosato, we are clearly still us and their Kisei Nosato because we're still clearly the bigger deal. <laughs> what? Okay. I think you might have said that backwards. That's, no, that's okay. I'm saying that we're a bigger deal than Kisei Nosato. I feel like we were talking about something. Okay. Now, now no. you got me back, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so according to both of those sources, uh, Izutsu Oyakata or former Sakahoko, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to call him Sakahoko because this gets kind of confusing with all the people named Izutsu. Sakahoko, uh, his widow still is exerting some sort of ownership control over the Kabu. Um, hmm. the Kabu, like the, the elder stock, the title of Izutsu, uh, with potentially the goal of keeping it in the family and potentially even offering it to any eligible rickshi who marries her daughter. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Which brings me to the entire reason for this podcast. I've never in my life wanted a reality show about sumo more <laughs> than the <laughs> sumo bachelorette here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So either... I don't know. Either there's some sort of like weird, creepy arranged marriage thing here, or somebody completely random is going to get that stock. Or I don't know. I, I I absolutely can see some like K drama type potential here. Some soap opera st- type stuff going on with Cocker. You oh, yeah. like? I'll marry totally. that girl. So help yeah, me. There are only 105 <laughs> Kabu. You know that's uh that's, that's all the something... Rikshi just appear on their bikes or just walk up to her on this. You know the the entrance oh, to. Can. Yeah, exactly. Like, hi, hello. <laughs> uh, this is my name. And uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I think you're really awesome. I would Give like to Kabu. execute my brand of romance. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Nyuden is going to be available in the very near future. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Not that that's oh. ever really stopped him before. What about Party Boy Abby? <laughs> Never know. <laughs> is Chiyomaru like taken? Like, you know, does he have a Kabu kind of lined up already? Ooh, he better. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> and I, this yeah. sounds like some solid, like a Bima TV, like after the boss show, it's <laughs> into, yeah, but them trying to, to, to swoon. <laughs> so hopefully it's a reality Dark. show, but at this point, all we know is that Kakuryu is trying to stay in the sumo f- association as a coach. Most likely, uh, if he does get that Izutsu, uh, status, if he does, uh, if, if he does win over that daughter, um, he, he would <laughs> probably start a new Izutsu stable. Uh, the, the name itself has been around for ages. Um, but, um, because there is currently no Izutsu stable, if he were to obtain that, he would have to start a new stable, like a new iteration of Izutsu stable. Um, so he would probably Izutsu West. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what we start. If one of us marries this girl, we will become yes. Izutsu West. <laughs> he's got five. He's got five years. He's going to take all five years with his cock to you uh, name that he's able to use. Enjoy his time with even harder. And then <laughs> going to have to break the news to her so he can go with Izutsu's daughter. God damn it. Yeah. Do what you got to do. <laughs> well, um, so that's that's all we know at this point we're we're recording this in june of 2021 so it's not like much time has passed to really find out what's going on with kakuyu by this point he's probably got two or three more injuries but we don't necessarily know what he's going to be doing professionally so he's, in the he's meantime be a coach for the jsa that's what he's going to be doing professionally and teaching the finer abilities of basketball <laughs> aka the cock ring <laughs> the cock ring yeah you've guys seen the video where he like sinks a three-pointer Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Part, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the context? His daddy of that? taught him that. I no, not at all. Other than Yokozuna and basketball players, okie dokie, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, his his signature move. He's actually uh, he he can shoot the ball pretty well, but he's really good at defending. They actually call him the cack block. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all that's right, that's a good one. Mm. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> now, that, now that we are done with the cack puns for the moment uh and uh we are wrapping up the story why don't we do a little bit of trivia mm. and the gimmick for our trivia 
is because Kakuyu was never like the top guy, we are going to award points to whoever gets the second closest answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a little derivative, but all right. <laughs> so for the for example, the first question, you guys uh and, and by the way, all all tabs closed, sumo db, Wikipedia, everything, close it out. Scrapbooks closed. Scrapbook show hose on. That's all the show hose on. That's it. Inapplicable. <laughs> there may be. There may you be can't some. Make me close that. <laughs> hey, I I can't I can't know for sure that there's no background cack in those. So you better close that sucker up. <laughs> Fine. All right. So for we'll we'll start off the the first question. And we'll we'll kind of walk through the gimmick here. When is Kakaryu's birthday? What day of the year? Um. So like whoever whoever gets really close, if you actually get right on day of the year, lose. day of the month. Uh, day of the week so like uh, december 26th okay for like example. a full day yes okay that is not acceptable mac but you said what day of the year the yes what month and day. day that's it oh well you didn't say that yes did i did mac now just go write, find it he like wrote freaking 200... wednesday no he no. wrote like a three-digit number th yes day. what day of the year the 267th <laughs> day Show Hosan's bicep. <laughs> okay, now hold up your answers to the screen. I will read them off for those of you who are listening rather than watching this on uh, on YouTube. Um, you guys didn't have to write the year, but so far we've got two for two on the right answer there. Okay, so our three answers are Ryan. Ha- what? No, continue holding them there so I can read them off. No, <laughs> uh, Ryan is guessing August twenty first. That is the first closest. You lose. Damn it. <laughs> uh, Flerick good. wrote May eighteenth. That is the third closest you lose. Mac wrote <laughs> ah. October 17th. That is the second closest. So Mac, is, Mac gets the point because yeah. his real birthday is August 10. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan, you are the best at trivia. You lose. <laughs> I'm just so happy with this idea. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this is like Ryan's kryptonite. I love it. I like yeah. <laughs> All right. So how many people live in Sukhbatar province, the rural province where Kakuyu grew up? Uh, this is, uh, uh, like I said, most of the people in Mongolia are in Ulaanbaatar, like the like federal district type thing, but uh, but the rest of the country is divided up into provinces. Not a whole lot of major cities and stuff like that. It's basically one city and a whole bunch of land. Um, but uh, let's see. So we have an answer from Mac of 17,000, an answer from Ryan of 1,067, and Flerick says dozens. <laughs> dozens so I think actually Flair's answer has to count as 24 yes, yes. It, dozens is 24 uh 24 is too low actually all three mm. of these are are too low uh but ryan you are the second to lowest <laughs> <laughs> so there are sixty thousand people in his province like it, ah. and it's not like a small province physically um but yeah, it's uh, so the the answer of one thousand is the winner here. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know how densely populated Mongolia is. And you neither know do I. Their provinces. <laughs> well, Ryan, you know the second best, therefore you get a point. <laughs> so Sukhbatar, the province that he's from, translates to something very cool. What does it translate to? <laughs> oh, this is very subjective. This oh. is very subjective. What the second coolest or the second closest answer is going to be? So. It's a it's a Mongolian word. There's it it contains two words. Um, so whatever you think is the second coolest thing to be guessed, <laughs> second second closest thing to this cool thing, write it down and let's let's see what you got. I have no idea. All right. So <laughs> Mac Mac writes second in command, which I mean thematically that's that's cool, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flerick wrote very cool. <laughs> Ryan says War Eagle, which is by far the closest, so you get no points. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give second in command the second yes! closest to the correct answer, so Matt gets another point. Uh, Sukhbatar translates to Axe Hero. Oh, that's Ooh. badass. Which is super cool, just like uh, War Eagle is. <laughs> <laughs> I just stole, like, Aub- Auburn's college... Uh, that's what like they yell or something. They're the like Auburn Tigers, but for some reason they have like a eagle or something at their games. And it's college Eagles football. Seem, it's it's college. Yeah, it's I almost wrote Roll Tide. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Roll Tide. Um, okay, question number four: How many absences does the CAC have in his career? 
Matches or Bashos? How many matches? So his career record is X hundred and something, X hundred and something, and then this third number of matches where he was not Fusen, but was like just straight up not entered in the tournament. Not putting my answer up yet. <laughs> Ryan's Got very protective of this cheaters. potentially second closest answer. Well, I've got to write a number, then next person's going to write one higher, and then the next person's going to write one higher than that. <laughs> yeah, it's price, price is right rules, right? Uh, There's fine. I have absolutely no idea what the proper game theory strategy is here. So <laughs> well, <he> is not. <laughs> okay. So Damn we it. have, so actually Flarick wins this one. Oh, nice. Uh, Ryan, you are the closest. <laughs> Ryan had 134, which is the most close to 231. Oh, wow. <laughs> which is so many, right? Oh my yeah. God. Flarick wrote 71. Mac wrote 69 for the memes, uh, but it did not work out this time. Flarick, you get the points for being second closest to the correct answer. 231 yes. absences. So yeah, now, I'll take bell. It. I don't know. I thought Did I heard you? something yeah. like ring a bell. No, there's no, no bell. bell. Might be having a stroke. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> one of the common symptoms. Toast? <laughs> uh, oh, no, my toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so similar to how many absences, how many Fusen losses did he have in his career? So this is like, how many times did he start a tournament or like we mentioned, not start a tournament, but didn't mention it early enough. How many Fusen losses are on his career? Mac, you're too high. Down. Mac, down. Move the thing down. Ah. There you go. All right. Just waiting on Flarek here. Get- this is some very exact thinking. Let's go for this. <laughs> Shit. I knew it was going to happen somehow. The correct answer... Okay, so first off, we have Flarek with 14, Ryan with 10, and Mac with seven. So the correct answer is 12. He has 12 <laughs> Fusen losses on his. So here we're going to do a tiebreaker. We're going to do a tiebreaker. Only Ryan and Flarek, whoever has the worst answer, whoever has the second best answer. <laughs> <to tie. laughs> but no, 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 we're, we're not. Re- what we're guessing is what number on his list. So like, is it the first most thing that he has lost by uh, as far as techniques? Mm. Is it the second? On his list of most common losing techniques, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. So we give like one first, second, Yeah, third. so write down a number okay. of what slot, what place do you think this this is on his, uh, oh, on the his Fusen. list? The Fusen, yep. Okay. So those 12 Fusen losses, where does that rank as far as like his top 10, top 20 or whatever uh, losing techniques? I'm going to resist from putting down 9,000. <laughs> it's over nine thousand. Okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you got, Flair? I don't think there's that many uh, Kimarite, so I'm gonna call bullshit on Ryan. So uh, Ryan's okay. answer is the second best here. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So well played, Ryan. Well so <laughs> Flarek, you wrote forty. Ryan wrote two thousand and forty-seven. Which is worse? So if the correct answer was it is his seventh most common losing Kimarite, which is wow. just hilarious, right? That's wow. Clark and I working with the same game theory. I just actually went with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, imp- I, I am, I'm happy for you. I'm not God, sad. This is, this is the worst. I <laughs> well love played. it. This, this really needs three people in order to be like properly frustrating for you and entertaining for me. Yeah, because I still need to be somewhat accurate, but I don't know how accurate is too accurate. And also, I don't know the answer to any of these. Bingo. Also, All right. true. I got I got uh, two more questions, although the last one is multi-part. Right. Um, so what rank did uh, Kakuyu win his only lower division you show? Know the answer. <laughs> So uh, in his in his uh, we mentioned it was a fairly slow rise to the top division, slow in part because he did only get one one time. Did he go uh, did did he actually win his division? All the other times he was just getting like, you know, barely catchy Koshis or whatever. Mac, I need you to be more specific. Oh, oh come on. Like actual not number. division, but actual like number. Oh, OK. Yeah, I don't want to make it. Don't want to make it too easy or hard or confusing or whatever your brain is tying itself in right now as you try to get the second best answer. All right, everybody ready? Yep. Eh. Correct answer is Sandanme 16. 
Oh, oh snap, Mac. Oh, bullseye. But wait. Oh, oh wait. Crap. I'm sorry. It's Sundown May 17. I was reading your answer of 17, of 16 because it was too close. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so Sundown May 17. Mac, you got almost dead on. You lose. Ah! Ryan, you got second closest at Sundan May 1. Therefore, you get a point. And uh, Flarek wrote down Jurio 16, which is way too far off. Way too high. <laughs> Curses. Third place. Okay, so I the last the, question. I got close to the right answer, but no points. <laughs> the last question is multi-part. Um, I- so I want to know, what was his record against the other Yokozunas? So, um, I, I just want a winning percentage from you guys. So mm. there are four Yokozuna that he faced in his career, um, in order, I guess, uh, from earliest in his career to latest. And, and this is career. So not just like against Kisuno Sato as a Yokozuna. I don't think they actually ever faced as Yokozuna. Did they probably not? Um, so against Asa Shoryu, against Hakuho, against Haruma Fuji, and against Kisuno Sato. I want four numbers from you, and I want them to be percentages. And I'll read off the numbers, because uh, some of these are kind of funny. Oh, you want a percentage against each? Yokozuna? I want a percentage against each of the four. Oh, okay. gotcha. So this one okay. is going to be four points, uh, and and I'll split up the points. Um, so but, I'll assure you, Hakuho, uh, Haruma Fuji, and then... Kisuno Ka- Sato. Kisuno Sato? Yep. Like, so, so it's including the entire time. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I don't think he ever faced Kisuno Sato as a, as, when they were both Yokozuna, but they did face off 50 times in their career. So, what was the winning percentage, for example? So, I want all four of them, and we'll start with Asashoryu. And I got the numbers in front of me here, so. Oh, okay. I'll have to fold this. <laughs> yes, whatever origami you have to do to reveal your answers in the proper order is totally fine. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys a little extra time to think. You can write down all four right now if you want, however you want to do it. But let me know. With Asa? Yep. Let me know when you guys are ready with Asa Shoryu. I'm I'm ready. I'm good. Same. All right. So hold up your answers. The correct answer is zero. So he never beat beat Asa Shoryu. So, Flarek, you are the closest. You lose. Uh, Ryan, uh, (laughs) Flarek wrote down zero. Ryan wrote down ten. And Mac wrote down 23. So, Ryan, you get a point for being the second closest on that one. Okay, next. What is his winning percentage against Hakuho? Oh, by the way, it was zero for six uh, against Asashoryu in his career. So, Hakuho. uh, Ryan has 2%. Uh, Mac lowered a little. Mac, you have 8%. And Flarek has 5%. So yes, Ryan, you know that you are, you are eliminated in this one. Uh, it's actually 15. Uh, mm. So Flarek, Flarek is the second closest to uh, yeah, the Flarek. 8 and 44 against Haku. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, since we're going in Yokozuna order, Harama Fuji is next. Uh, hold up your answers when you are ready with Harama Fuji. Um, so Mac has 17. Ryan has 20. Flarek has 40. The correct answer is 38.6. So, Flarek, you were closest. Ryan, you were second closest. That is a point for Ryan. And then lastly, career. Uh, like I said, um, oh, uh, God, I keep forgetting to do this. 17 and 27 against Haruma Fuji. Hmm. 38.6%. Uh, Kisuno Sato. This one is going to be an even, like, uh, like dead on a number because they matched up exactly 50 times. How cool is that? All right. Uh, Max answer is 15. Ryan's is 50. Flarex is 71. The correct answer is 36. Ooh. 36%. Also terrible against him too. Ma- or Ryan, <laughs> did you already do the math in your head? Who's who got, I was at 14% off. And what was max number? I was 15. You were so, 15% total, 15% total. So Mac is Mac is further off than you. Yeah. Okay. So Mac gets a point for the Yay. last one. So, uh, yeah, uh, he went 18 and 32 against Kisuno Sato. So just terrible against all four of them, which I thought was worth bringing up. Um, I, I just, that, that was kind of baffling to me. Like, I, I was just looking up his, his numbers against other people that he'd faced off uh, against uh, a large number of times. And most of them are pretty respectable. Like, you know, Koto Shogaku is another guy you toss in that mix. He went 30 and 22 against him. 
he went 29 and 14 against Goedo. Um, uh, anybody else you guys would be curious about? That's about it, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tochi Ozon, surprisingly, is also way up on that list. He's 24 and oh, yeah, 21 against him. Tochi Ozon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Tochi Ozon was definitely declining by the time we started commentating. Yeah. It, it kind of like lines up to what we know. Like he consistently beats the people below him, but there's a couple people above him who kind of seem to consistently have his number. What about Terano Fuji? Terano Fuji. There you go. Uh, seven and four. Or excuse me, eight and four if you count the playoff. Hmm. Okay. So perfectly respectable there. Um, but yeah, um, Shodai, he went 13 and 0 against Shodai. Wow. I think that might be the highest undefeated. Oh, nope, never mind. Kaisei, 15 and 0. Oh, geez. <laughs> Kaisei is very famous for having never beaten a Yokozuna. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he almost has it over Aoyama. He went 20 and 1 against Aoyama in his career. <laughs> <laughs> um, 23 and 4 against Tochi Notion, like we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, but yeah, so uh, that is our Cocker U episode. Uh, I'm going to total up our trivia here. Uh, Mac, you got three answers right. Flarek, you got two answers right. Ryan, you got five answers right, which is the most. So therefore, Mac in second place. <sighs> My strategy the work, baby! <laughs> and Ryan wrote down bullshit because he knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> My did. strategy worked. <laughs> Mac, therefore, you know the second most, second most about Kakaryu. <laughs> I am a Kakaryu aficionado. <laughs> kind of a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll take us out. If you guys have any memories of Kisuno Sato, oh, <laughs> whoa. before, whoa. Uh, before if you have we... any memories of Kakaryu, <laughs> I was just going to say, um, when we, uh, when we yeah, tweet you're out You're really episode, bad pronouncing his name, Jake. <laughs> it's even harder. Or wait, yes. that's who he married. That's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, anyways, uh, <laughs> leave us leave us your memories of Kakuyu, not Kisuno Sato, or if you have memories <laughs> of both of them at the same time, I suppose we'll accept those. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, what did you have? I was gonna say before we we log off of this episode, this is probably the first guy that like we've seen a decent amount of his career that's retiring and we might be able to share our own thoughts on Kakuryu a little bit uh here since like we actually saw four of his U shows and got to see a decent amount of his uh career not decent amount of his career but decent amount of his Yokozuna career uh yeah. so just yeah if do you anybody guys have any, had other, uh... any particular memories of Kakuryu I know Flarek was always a big fanboy of the Kak yeah we, mm-hmm. we we don't have to rush out of here we got some time um Flarek, so yeah, the 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 lunchbox, the lunchbox ordeal that I know is still cluttering up your garage and and yep. uh, causing trouble if, for uh, your yeah. Bank if account. anyone wants to buy one, two, or twenty lunchboxes, I don't know. <laughs> I I always kind of liked the guy, mostly because I feel like everyone kind of discounted him, like he's not that good, and like every time he seems to come back. Granted, yeah, he's plagued with injury times, but when he's healthy, he like consistently got Yokozuna, uh, Kachikoshi, and like there's a while he was winning, like he won two U shows in a row when he was going against uh, uh, Tochi no Shin during that whole entire time. So I, I kind of liked him because of that, because he's a little bit of an underdog, but I know I knew he was pretty good. And he showed that consistently when he is healthy. And I, the other thing I just, I, I like, I like this, his style was like mystifying. It wasn't flashy. It was just kind of like, it was like consistently sneakily good. Like where he's just kind of just, he, uh, I always thought it was kind of more defensive where he's kind of reactionary. He pulled uh, a lot more than I think a lot, a lot of people want a Yokozuna to. I don't think we care about that, but I think mm-hmm. uh, people, probably the same people that don't like Takakesho style or something like that, they'd probably be angry that somebody that pulls as much as he does was a yeah. Yokozuna. Yeah, yeah. yeah his, it, his, uh, just for reference here, uh, Yori Kiri was his most common winning Kimarite by a decent amount. You'd expect Oshidashi to be a second place, even if you're looking at somebody who's primarily a grappler. But he actually has more Hataki Komi wins than Oshidashi wins. Definitely um, a pull, then. Yeah, 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 exactly. So he would he would allow people to overextend uh, as as a strategy. It wasn't like he was giving up and therefore pulling, you know, as a last resort. It was like actually his strategy here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's something that's actually I've grown to appreciate a lot more, especially in the 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 time of Takakesha, who I think is really, really good at that pushing and pulling like balance. 
because it can really easily go bad. But if you're like really on top of it, you can like just be really world class. And I think like that's what you showed. Like he is a Yokozuna. He is top of the entire field. And like he was able to use those techniques very well. And other than that, like he's just like seems like a nice guy. I like he definitely he didn't have any bl- no real scandals uh, that I know of. And like he was like head of the Players Association too, I believe for Rikshi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I just he seems like a good guy. And I when he was healthy, I enjoyed watching him do his brand of sumo. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> he's somebody that I think I wish I appreciated more when I was watching him because uh, I think. I mean, kind of had to make our assumptions based on Kakryu in the middle of his Yokozuna run. And I think when we first started, it was like we talked about, he was always injured. And so I don't, I don't think I ever probably gave him the credit that he deserved. Even now, I'm looking up the two you show that he won back to back. And I was just like, well, you know, in that first one, he only fought two Ozeki, one Sekiwake, and one Komosubi, and he went two and two against them. <laughs> so I'm still trying to discredit the guy. I was yeah. about to say, come on, Ryan. You well, don't even realize you're doing it, and you're yeah. like still trying to minimize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's kind of weird. Like, I hear all these good stories about Kakaryu and just how amazing of a person it seems like he was. And it's just like, I really wish that I gave him more of a chance when he was fighting to appreciate him. Cause I think I just came down on the side of, well, he's always injured. Uh, he probably should retire. And then he kept going. And so I kind of just like was cheering against him a little a bit sour in taste. my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I kind of wish I didn't have that point of view as i was watching him kind of appreciated him a little bit more but i mean that's where i was at uh so that that's kind of my overall memory of kakryu is just constantly waiting for him to retire but now that we kind of have a gap in the yokozuna i mean this guy easily could have eight nine ten you shows right now with hakuhogan if he had been able to stay healthy because he he was after Haramafuji left, he was the next best guy. He was the clear next best guy. But with Kakuryu and Hakuho gone, there was no clear next best guy that Kakuryu would have been uh, with Hakuho's absence. Yeah. And, and uh, in the Hakuho era, in, unless you count Asashoryu, he is, he's by a wide margin the third best guy. Um, Haramafuji had what, nine, I think, in his nine wins in his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kakuryu has six. And then next closest place, you got Takakesho, Mitakiyumi, and Kisuno Sato with two. And I think you got to get... Or like, excuse me, Terano think- Fuji also has, yeah, has Terano four. Fuji, yeah. But I was, I, but I was thinking, like, Kisuno Sato's career, yeah, the Yusho numbers aren't there, but the extreme consistency that he had to get 12 June Yusho before that first yeah. Yusho. Yeah. Like, if you just look at his numbers from Basho to Basho, are probably a lot more impressive than what his Yusho count is. Um, but yeah, I, I would still agree. Probably take healthy cock to you when you can, but I was looking through his stats earlier today uh, to try to game the system and uh, win points and trivia. <laughs> uh, he only had one full year as a Yokozuna where he completed. Well, it wasn't even like a calendar year, but where he completed six Basho in a row as a Yokozuna. Oof. That sucks. So he, he just, as soon as he hit that, that Yokozuna rank his just body just gave out on him. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I did uh, total it up real quick. Uh, if you add Yusho and Jun Yusho together, Kakuryu and Kisuno Sato both have 14. Um, but like one one of them translated that into three times as many actual wins. And when you're, yeah, you can say, you you can talk about injury, you can talk about when Hakuho's there and when he's not there. But that means something. The, it's probably you know, got a yeah. little bit more mental toughness. He can execute yeah. down. Well, I mean, we talked about him starting off 10-0, and 0, then losing the next five. And <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So but he, he did have some of that to be able to beat Hakuho on the final day when the Basho was on the line. Multiple times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, there, there's there's definitely something to say for the uh, the toughness it takes to actually get those wins. And that's why... That's why you show is the thing that's, you know, like engraved on your career and junior show is like way down the list, you know? Yep. So, yeah, uh, I think my ultimate opinion of him is 
uh, he was never flashy, uh, but but he got the job done. Uh, he was he was mm-hmm. never going to be the greatest. He was never going to be the greatest of his time, uh, but he, he was good enough to be on that Mount Rushmore of the Hakuho. Era. He was genuine. He was just mm-hmm. a genuine, even Kyo Yokozuna wasn't flashy. Didn't go out and do anything extravagant. He was just there. He was the constant. <laughs> I did really like, though, that he that there's a very limited selection of guys that will show just like that tiny little bit of emotion on the ring. I love his uh, smile. <laughs> yeah. And, and like when I think I can't remember what match it was. I don't know. There was some match where something kind of funny happened and he lost. Uh, but like he gets up and he's smiling because it's like that was so stupid. That was that was ridiculous. What just <laughs> happened? But he's still just like enjoying himself. He's he was never the guy that like like Hakuho is furious every time he loses, regardless of how legitimate it is, you know, mm-hmm. and Kaku is just kind of, he's just kind of, you know, it, top of the me. world, but doing, <laughs> but doing what he loves, you know? Yeah. He, he's the guy that made it to Yokozuna and he's like, can you guys believe I'm Yokozuna? <laughs> <How> <laughs> is that? Whereas Hakuho is like, I need to be the greatest of all time. And like, he's never going to be happy. Whereas I think Kakuryu was very happy with where he ended up. Yeah. Like, uh, like Hakuho is Ricky Bobby yelling, like, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah. And then Kakuryu <laughs> is the dad going, what? I was probably drunk when I said that. No, you can be second. <laughs> you can be third. third. Hell, you can even be fifth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is just what popped into my head when you said that. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I, I, I think I'll appreciate him a lot more in hindsight than I did mm. in real time. Uh, and so there's probably guys now like that. I'm not appreciating like, yeah, Mitaki Yumi that would Mitaki like, Yumi, I was just going to say, yep. <laughs> People might try to throw go away to him in my face and no, he, he got the exact, I knew not to from throw me. that one out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean with him gone and like, let's, let's flash forward to, uh, probably after the next Basho, if Hakuho retires, with with those two guys gone, we have nobody that has more than four Yusho in their career with Terano Fuji as far as active Rikshi goes. Mm-hmm. And after him, there's Mitaki Yumi and Takakesho at two. Like we're he he's a he, he's absolutely a critical uh important point and an important part of that generation that is now retiring with you know Kisuno Sato, Haruma Fuji gone. Um, like it's, it's a big deal. I think that, you know, we, we've talked about on this podcast that we knew we were in a generational turnover point and Cocker is definitely a big one that, yeah, you, you don't really know what you got until it's gone. Although he's been <laughs> gone for like, you know, a year and a half, but yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm, I absolutely agree with you, Ryan, on that one. Yeah. It's like, a, if the goodbye is not hard, that means that the, 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 what was it? The, the, the relationship, the feelings yeah. you had from didn't matter. Or the emotions like weren't there. Yeah, put that exact, <laughs> exact, perfectly quoted quote on a pillow. I don't want any paraphrasing yeah. or cleaning up of that. I want what Flarek said on a pillow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, anybody have any other uh, stories or incidents we didn't talk about? I don't. I, I don't really think so. Mm. I, I guess for me, the only other thing I'd bring up is I definitely remember early on in watching sumo. Um, like towards the end of 2016, I think it would have been, I was kind of on the lookout for like, eventually Ryan would find his Goedo, like, you know, the guy that was good enough to love to hate him. And I kind of tried to do that with Kakuyu, but then he just like stopped wrestling, you know? Mm-hmm. So it like, wasn't fun anymore. So he yeah. just, yeah, for me, he just kind of faded out, but like, I, I really wanted him to be my early nemesis. So yeah. it, it mm-hmm. just didn't work out. Yeah. And to to Kakadu's credit, there's only 20 people in the history of the world that have won more tournaments than him. Oh, holy cow. Nice. Uh-huh. And this Six. is the era of Hakuho. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows how many he'd be walking around with if Hakuho wasn't around. I mean, that's why you got to go to Mr. J-Wag's channel for the Shadow Indeed, of Hakuho series. The Shadow of Hakuho. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know how far along he is in that? Because I'd love if he has a final count of how many extra Cocker you would have gotten. He did a quick one recently. I can't remember how far along it was exactly. I think we're past the halfway point, but I don't, it's not quite close to ending yet. Yeah, we'll have to touch base with him later. Yep. He's busy right now. Yes. Well, uh, if that is all, like I said, I, I, I do want to... Uh, I, I Sorry, I didn't mean to... Uh, 
start cutting you guys off earlier, but yeah, I definitely do want to hear stories. If anybody has uh, other Kakuyu stuff they want to bring up. Um, so let's, let's get that conversation going on Twitter. See if anybody else has uh, some more fun stories for us. Yep. And we also put out a Twitter thread a couple of days ago asking for questions. We're going to be doing another Ask GSB episode. Uh, we got quite a bit of a response on Twitter for that. But if you're not on Twitter and want to send us a question that you would like us to answer on an upcoming podcast, you can uh, send us a voicemail. Uh, Mac, what's the number for that voicemail? 805 613 7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Uh, you got it right. <laughs> yeah. You can also uh, email us, grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, if you have any questions. So, uh, Anna, this is this is your chance. This is our call uh, for you to send us those yes. questions you've been building up. <laughs> <laughs> Are there potentially any social media platforms we could check out too, Ryan? Probably not. No. I, that's your job, Flarek. You know all the social media. You, you were doing all the other. Uh, yeah, you uh, did all of mine, jerk. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, go, if you want somebody it. to do it right, go to Twitter. We are mm. G Sumo Breakdown on Twitter. Uh, not okay. allowed. Not What's allowed. What's the, the full, full URL for that? Just out of curiosity. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I could. I'm not going to pull it up. Screw you. Why are um, you humoring him? No. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> YouTube, Grand Sumo Breakdown. We are on Facebook, Grand Sumo Breakdown. We have a blog. Uh, wordpress.grandsumobreakdown.com uh, Patreon We have we have a Patreon, we do have a Patreon. Breakdown.com. It's only one or three dollars or more or if more. you want uh, to uh, join our Patreon. One dollar you are thrown into the Bolo Coppolence where once per Basho on our main preview, midway and recap episodes uh, on one of those three you will get a compliment from one of the GSB hosts. And if you sign up for the $3 level, not only will you get a compliment, but you will force us to talk about whatever you want <laughs> in a segment. Uh, Interesting way to as, phrase that. Yes. As long as it's not <laughs> we are bound by blood. <laughs> we, we're not, we're not doing anything super offensive. Sorry. It's not going to happen. Um, I'd love it can, if you wanted to push the boundaries though. So send us your ideas. Yes. <laughs> See what we can get Ryan to commit to for a topic. <laughs> you can send us a bird with a note tied around its leg. Jake, what's your address so that they can send the bird? <laughs> Birds can't read addresses. Ryan <laughs> almost got me there. You can you can write a message in a bottle, throw it into the ocean. We live in Iowa. It might take a while for us to <laughs> for it to get there, but damn it, hey, we'll try our best. With this with the sea levels rising, give it like maybe <laughs> maybe twenty years tops. There you go. <laughs> I'm believe, excited to have oceanfront property in a decade. <laughs> I believe Mac has a telegram probably hidden in his basement. So if you if you want to send something there, how Flair's do you know about our that? resident Morris code master? Uh, so you can beep, beep. do that. Uh, I believe I got I got a CB radio in the back. My call sign is Big Daddy Sumo. Uh, so just, just oh find Big God. Daddy Sumo. Oh God, I regret CB this. Radio. No, Jake, <laughs> all right, get me I'll, out. I'll End it. Get me out. Wait, Mac, what's our fax number? Uh, no. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. <laughs>